These here are a bunch of dead Ryzen CPUs. At least, uh, that's what I suspect. And I've collected these over the years from our Fix or Flop playlist. Each of these has a rather prominent issue, and uh, I do want to say that they all, all look physically fine. There are no missing bent pins in any of these, no dislodged IHSs, any of that mess. Um, these look like they should work, but for whatever reason, either do not post or do not power on at all. There is one exception, this 5900X here, which I believe is the only 5000 series Ryzen processor in this bulk, um, that just boot loops. This one boot loops. It doesn't, it, it posts, but then when you try to load into Windows, it just completely resets itself over and over and over again. So, interesting one. But anyway, we're gonna set a test bench up and try to figure out if I was right or wrong in my conclusions about these CPUs. Do we in fact have this many dead Ryzen CPUs in however many episodes of Fixer Flop have aired? I think it's been, what, we're on season three now? So around 50, 60 episodes. To have almost 10% of those episodes lead to dead Ryzen CPUs, I mean, it's obviously not a large enough sample size to make any bold claims, but uh, it is worth investigating a bit further, and that's why this video exists. I hope you'll enjoy our investigation. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Hey there, and welcome to our elaborate laboratory, which consists of just a motherboard on its box and a power supply and a, yeah, portable monitor. That's it, <laughs> nothing fancy here. I also wanna state for the record that uh, we don't have an official test bench, so to speak, for the Fixer Flop videos you're, you've probably already seen. If you haven't, that playlist is linked below. Uh, it doesn't really make sense for what we do because we open it up to pretty much anyone with a PC issue, and that means we get all kinds of platforms in the studio from, I don't know, anything from like Intel 6th gen up to AM4 and AM5, Intel 12th gen, 13th gen, um, so it doesn't make sense to have like one dedicated platform for testing stuff because I'd have to change it every episode. It's not like we only work with Ryzen hardware or Intel 12th gen or 13th gen hardware. So I get folks asking all the time, why don't you have a test bed? It's because it, it, you can't have just one test bed. You need like 10 to cover everything that comes in. So uh, I've made a makeshift test bed here uh, with an AM4 platform. This is a B550 Aorus Pro V2. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that this works with a known and working CPU so that, you know, what we see in the future actually makes sense. And that's where this bad boy comes into play. This is a Ryzen 5 5500. This was sent to me direct from AMD. It is known working, and I'm gonna show you right now in that test bed, we can get a post. I've even got a storage drive in there with Windows loaded on it, so we should actually get straight into the operating system with this CPU. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, we need some sort of graphics card because we don't have integrated graphics in these Ryzen CPUs. Ooh, la la la, you guys know what this thing is. Oh yeah, go ahead and get in there. Mmm, looking good. And okay, so we've got again, the CPU that should work in the motherboard now, and this will serve as our control. As long as this functions properly, any result we see that deviates from this outcome here would mean that the CPU in question is bad. Uh, this is why it's so important to have a test like this run at the very beginning. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> that was easy. So booted straight up into Windows as well, which uh, I wanted to confirm because again, we do have one of the defective CPUs that apparently has a boot loop issue that occurs after the system posts, but before it boots into the uh, boot volume. So, all right, the control is taken care of. Now let's swap in our first defective, or what we suspect is a defective CPU. That'll be this bad boy right here, a Ryzen 5 3600. I just marked it as bad, so I'm assuming it doesn't even post, but probably powers on to some extent. And just in case you're wondering, before we install it, you can see here the chip looks very clean underneath, no bent or missing pins. Let's go ahead and get this installed nice and gently now, and we'll lower that retention arm. Oh, and uh, one more thing. For the record, I am totally okay with being wrong about any of these CPUs. If it turns out I screwed up and the chip actually works just fine, we can reference the serial number, go back to that episode in question, and kind of walk through maybe the mistakes that I made on camera uh, so that you guys can, can learn from that. I think there's so much more value in watching someone make a mistake uh, than watch someone actually do it successfully, uh, because that, that might help you avoid making that same mistake in the future. So again, I, I'd be much more happy to find out that I made a mistake and have a working CPU I can reuse in a future Fix or Flop episode than to find out that I actually was correct and all these are, are really dead, so.
just that. I always try to document my failures. I think that's super important. Uh, also, for the record, in case you're wondering, I chose this motherboard strategically. It's a B550 board, and it has been updated with the latest BIOS to support all of these suspected dead CPUs. So we shouldn't have any BIOS incompatibilities while running these tests. So here we go, power on the power supply, and then let's jump the two power pins. Okay, so it does power on. Looks like we're stuck on a DRAM LED light. I always want to give it maybe a minute or two, especially with Ryzen, just to train memory. When you swap out an important piece of hardware, it's got to relearn some things. But uh, it looks like the lights are just pivoting between CPU and DRAM. And I think that's as far as we're going to get. Interesting. Now it is very possible that this CPU had a dead memory channel. I might not have been specific at this time because I just wasn't aware earlier in the uh, fix or flop seasons that we'd be running into this many Ryzen chips. So in hindsight, I definitely should have been uh, a bit more particular instead of just writing bad, maybe just write bad memory channel or something like that. So I'm going to move this memory module to slot B2 instead of A2 in hopes that this might get the system to post. A bad memory channel sucks, but it's not the end of the world. You can work around it. It will cut into performance just a tad, but uh, yeah, I just wanna, I'm just curious at this point. So the light switches over straight to DRAM again. And again, this is why it was important to get our control early, early on. We know that this module works. So yeah, it just keeps pivoting between CPU and DRAM. Huh, that's unfortunate. And you can see, regardless of the slot we use, I'm in slot A1 now, we still get that hanging DRAM LED. So um, I'd be willing to bet, actually, that this CPU has two dead memory channels. It's just because it's telling us it's a DRAM problem and not a CPU problem. I think it would just be hanging on the CPU debug light if it was something else internally wrong with the chip. So. Who knows, the fact is it doesn't post at all, regardless of what we do. And uh, so we're gonna move on to the next one. Also worth noting that this graphics card never got hot. Now this thing actually heats up pretty uh, pretty fast when we do have a post. It's just, uh, it's, I don't know what it is about it. It just runs really hot, but uh, it's completely, I mean, it's room temperature right now. So this wasn't even initialized. Whatever, again, was the issue, just uh, was happening early on in the test cycle. Next up then, we have a Ryzen 5 3600X, also just marked bad. But you can see on the back here, all the pins are in place. You can see it easier if I took it out of the case. But uh, the CPU looks really clean physically, but uh, yeah, we had some problems. I'm really hoping that uh, at least one of these <laughs> can be revived or actually works and I was just outright wrong. That would be pretty cool. Let's see, power on. Are we gonna get something with this one? So we're on the DRAM light now. This looks like almost the exact same scenario. So we're just hanging on the DRAM light and not getting anywhere. The fan is ramped up pretty much to full speed, so it hasn't settled down like it wants to post. The graphics card is not getting hot yet again. I do have a speaker connected, by the way, and uh, the speaker almost every time I connect it makes no sound at all. Like, I don't know if it's just like these new motherboards don't beep when they have issues, but uh, it just doesn't do me any good. So yeah, looks like another defective one. Let's try a different memory slot. But unfortunately, nope, no slot works. And I'll show you, I just powered on right away here. CPU light turns on quickly switches over to the DRAM light, and it pretty much just stays there with uh, no other reaction from the system. This looks like a splitting image of the 3600. Very, very weird. So potentially here, another dual memory channel issue. Again, I can't confirm that. I don't have the sophisticated equipment to test this any more than we can with this uh, little makeshift test bench, but this one's just not salvageable. It's there's just nothing I can do. I never thought I'd be this disappointed to be right twice in a row, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Let's move on to the next defective chip. And that would be this guy right here. Now, interestingly enough, I have two defective Ryzen 9 3900Xs. I 
I don't know if the symptoms were identical with these, but I think we ran into them pretty much back to back in the series. So we'll start with the one that has uh, the smaller font and we'll work our way to this one. Will we have any sign of life of that? I am not sure. Lever down. While doing this one handed is kind of difficult. Come on, give me something. Let's go. Power on and power on. Okay, now in this case, the fan is not spinning as quickly. Now it's ramped up. It powered off and then powered back on. I'm just like kind of like walking you through this verbally. Um, the behavior of this now is much different. Oh, we got a, we got a beep. Is it post? <gasps> it posted. I was wrong. I'm sure nobody's surprised, but I, I'm kind of shocked that this is the one that that works. Okay, uh, let's click Y. We can get into Windows potentially. Why would I have marked this bad if it's not actually bad? I wonder if this just came down to a BIOS issue. So we'll see if it boots into Windows. And if it does, then I'll show you guys a serial number and we'll do our best to find that particular fix or flop episode and see what I might have gotten wrong. Wow, I really did not expect this. Okay, so looks to be running fine. <laughs> Still kind of confused. Uh, I'm gonna run a quick stress test just to make sure it's stable. Maybe that's why I marked it bad. And then we'll find that video. A few moments later. Oh, uh, that, that didn't last long. So I was loading up 3D Mark just to run, I don't know, Fire Strike or something. And uh, it just reset itself completely, just black screened. It didn't even blue screen. It just cut off and then reset and then loaded into the BIOS. <laughs> so maybe that's why I marked it bad. Now the V-Core here is set to auto and I suspect we're probably running into some sort of throttling issue. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just going to give it a 1.1 hard cap on the V-Core just to see if we can get the system to remain stable for any decent amount of time. Maybe and run that 3D Mark benchmark and uh, hope it holds up. But we run into more issues. I uh, can't seem to get past boot failure detected now. It just keeps popping up over and over. I've tried multiple settings. I've tried physically lowering the uh, the, the boost frequency, the, the base clock of the CPU. I, I mean, I don't really know how else to make this platform more stable. It just keeps throwing out this error. It's, yeah, it's starting to make a lot more sense now. Seriously though, like, it, I think it's just getting worse the longer the system stays on. <laughs> okay, we'll set this one aside for now. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere. We did get into Windows at the start, but it, I, I just think that now that it's been running a bit longer, it's gotten a bit hotter. It's just way less stable. It's kind of fun though. Such a shame with this one. I'm going to write overheats question mark, just so I have somewhere to start again if we try to tackle this in the future. Next up then, the other Ryzen 9 3900X. That last one really teased us. So maybe, just maybe, we'll get something out of this one. Let's see, power on, power on up front. There we are. Shift straight to DRAM. So right now the DRAM LED is lit. Looks like this one is doing the same thing that the other 3900X did. The fan, it's weird, the LEDs on the DRAM aren't lit. But that right there sounds good. And there we go, there's a post again. So I wonder, are we gonna get the exact same demonstration from this one that we got from the previous one? It's just weird that they're matching up. Like the symptoms for these different SKUs seem to be aligning, it's just strange. Uh, let's click Y. And let's see if we can get a post here. The beep is good. Is this, oh, there we go. That was a post. Are we gonna get into Windows? Nope. Okay, I don't think, no it is. It's loading right now, it's loading into Windows. Wow. Okay, may, maybe I was wrong about this one. It's just strange that like the same skews seem to have the same problems. I don't I don't know. It's it's just all around weird. Um 
Let's just see if it's stable. Try to open up a program of some sort. Let's see, I don't want Steam. Our graphics card is not going to be able to keep up with anything we open there. Uh, but let's try installing Geekbench, maybe running a CPU benchmark. And here it goes. I'm just going to leave the camera rolling. I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if it didn't crash, but so far it seems okay. A lot of boring math later. And, uh, wow. Would you look at that? It actually ran without issue. We even got a decent score, I think. I'd have to go back and compare. But uh, it didn't blue screen on us. The system didn't crash. I actually don't think there's anything wrong with this. So let's take a look at this serial number and try to find the Fix or Flop episode where we might have made a mistake. And it's times like these when I really wish I specified the issue in each Fix or Flop episode because I'm going to have to go through so many of these to figure out where this serial number is. Um, yeah, I'll be back in probably like 30 minutes. 12 o'clock midnight. Super, super bricked. And another thing's for sure, this 3900X is partially bricked. Dead memory channel, uh, it's not unusable, but it's not. Aha, okay, so it was a dead memory channel. That's why it was posting. We only have one module connected currently. Uh, so I bet you if we swap that to the opposite channel, if it's in channel A now, it'll be channel B, where this chip does not post. That is worth noting, and I need to specify that on this IHS. And sure enough, we just get a hanging DRAM LED here. Again, this is very similar to what we're seeing with those 3600s, which is why I think those also had memory channel problems. I think uh, in that case, obviously it was two dead channels instead of here, we just have one dead channel. So anytime you connect a memory uh, module to either B1 or B2 slots, we get no post. You can see in the back there, no picture, and we don't get past this light. So not the end of the world for this Ryzen 9 3900X, but uh, the fact that it doesn't have a working memory channel and the fact that this is also an expensive SKU means that it's kind of sort of not useful for most applications. I'm gonna keep it just in case, but yeah, it's just, yeah, performance-wise, you're gonna see a pretty big cut only being able to utilize one channel of memory for a uh, 12 core CPU like this. We've got our last CPU then, and that's this Ryzen 9 5900X, a much newer Zen 3 CPU, and it has a boot loop issue. Like I said earlier, it just for some reason will post and then completely reset itself. I'm not sure why, but I, I can at least show you here. Let's see how we do. Power on and power at the pins. Here we go. So again, I expect this one will post. Looks good so far. VGA light is on. Probably gonna train memory. It is a different CPU architecture, a newer architecture. Okay, there's a beep. That's a good sign. There we go. So that's our post. Now again, from here, it's, it's easy. You can get into the BIOS, no problem. We'll go ahead and click Y to reset the, uh, yeah, this is a TPM here. And this is when it starts boot looping. <laughs> it's a really weird symptom, but I marked it as such because I'd never seen anything like it before in a CPU. So let's see here. There was the splash page. Splash page. I don't know if you can hear the beep on my mic, but uh, it just, yeah, keeps doing weird stuff. Like that right there. This, I, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> just a blue screen. I've never even seen this before. At least it's not resetting right away. It's trying, but yeah, I mean, there's just nothing here. Let me see if I can control alt delete, get it to reset, nothing. Just completely frozen. So we'll do a manual reset and let's see if anything happens this time. Uh, yeah, nothing. It just, it just freezes, it completely freezes. It's not resetting. It's kind of strange. It's not boot looping like I had it marked earlier. Let me reset over here again. So here's another reset. Let's see if the same thing happens a third time. And uh, if it does, I mean, maybe there's a chance we can get into the BIOS here. So it's just repairing, autom <laughs> preparing automatic repair now because I've reset it so many times, but I've had no choice. It doesn't get us anywhere. And I think even this is frozen. This, 
I, I don't recall in that episode, but it's possible. I thought this might've been like a, a thermal issue. Like maybe the CPU is overheating internally and it's just locking up. It was about the only thing I could really make sense of is like possibly just overheating. I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, so it keeps doing this. Let me see if I can get into the BIOS. I'm just gonna spam the delete key once I reset here. Yep, so we're resetting. We're gonna spam delete. Let's see if we can get into the BIOS. Okay, that's a good sign. And okay, so this is the, yeah. So this was the part that kind of confused me. So yeah, I mean, temperatures are pretty, pretty high, but they do level out. I'm just using an air cooler here, but if I go into advanced. Maybe I can, maybe I can just trick it into running very low power. Let's see, uh, we're gonna go down to V core. We'll just set it to like, I don't know, one again, maybe 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, let's just do 1.1. 1 .1. And then I'm gonna drop the frequency all the way down. And see what's really strange about the behavior of this chip is that in the BIOS, it runs perfectly fine. No issues, it doesn't freeze randomly or take too long to switch between windows. It's all super fluid. And uh, just for whatever reason, when it tries to do anything past that, it completely craps the bed. So I've got the thing tuned down to like three, I think three gigahertz tops with a 1.1 V core, which should be stable. Um, again, every chip's gonna be slightly different, but in my experience with the Ryzen chips, that should be fine. And I'm going to click yes. And we're going to see if potentially this was a thermal issue. I feel like of all the chips that we can salvage, this is the one that we might be able to figure out because it's not just like an immediate hardware problem that we run into right away when the system tries to post. The fact that we can get into the BIOS might be our saving grace. So it looks like it's loading now. We're actually getting further, wow! <gasps> We're actually getting further than I thought we would. Okay. So, I mean, seeing as though the only thing we changed here was the frequency and the voltage, I think it's, I mean, I doubt at auto settings, it's like not, you know, the board's like not pumping enough voltage to keep up with base clock frequencies. Um, I think that, I think that we probably were just thermal throttling. I think it's stock, it's just a bad chip. And I mean, who knows what it's gone through. I mean, remember these are all viewer chips. So maybe this thing was like overvolted like crazy, ran at super high frequencies that just weren't sustainable. And so it damaged the chip somewhat. And uh, this just means we have to pull things back. We have to throttle back the voltage to keep the temps down. And um, I mean, so far it looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and run Geekbench again, just to see if it's stable. And we'll move on because this doesn't have a dead memory channel issue either. Um, it's, it's just a boot loop issue. Pretty, pretty excited about this one. It'd be a good way to end it, to actually salvage a chip somewhat. Wow, would you look at that? Actually, no issues at all running this. We're in the uh, almost a third minute now, and it hasn't run into a hiccup. I'm curious what our score is gonna be. Because again, we did have to sort of kind of gimp the CPU, but I think that's better than the alternative, which is what it was doing earlier, it's just unusable. It was very unstable. So I call this a, mostly a win. <laughs> we did have to play around with it a tad. It was a bit stubborn, but we, we made it work. Not bad. And uh, yeah, this score, not, not too great, but that's just because of the frequency. So I'm going to try my best to remove this Sharpie. I'm not, actually it does, look at that. Isopropyl alcohol just picks it right up there. Okay, cool. And I'm going to write something along the lines of, uh, I don't know, stubborn. How about that? You know, I've got to say, Pretty happy the way this one turned out. Uh, one stubborn CPU and the others I ended up being right about, at least from what we could see here in this one. Uh, it was nice to follow up. It was peace of mind in uh, the cases of these four, just kind of reassurance that I'm sort of kind of on the right track when it comes to the fixer flop stuff. And then uh, this one here, just proof that I probably had to dive a bit deeper. If I had spent a bit more time with this one, I probably could have figured out in that very episode that this was just a, uh, just a bit stubborn, but I think, or at least I'd like to think that I would have replaced the chip anyway, because uh, yeah, having a 5900X, that you have to run it like three or 3.3 gigahertz just to get it to function properly. I'd still call that a dud in my book. I'm gonna keep it because I, I think I can find plenty of uses for this, 
But uh, for these others, I've been trying to reach out to AMD in hopes that they will uh, check these out for us. Maybe their machines, their fancy equipment can tell us in greater detail what is wrong with them. I'd like to know if my suspicions regarding dead memory channels is correct, in particular uh, the uh, the two 3600s, well, one 3600 and one 3600X. So uh, that would be nice. I keep trying to get them to take these on. I haven't gotten an official response yet, but I will let you know if that changes. With that, give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Consider subscribing if you have not already. I want to thank our patrons especially for supporting us and uh, I'm hoping to upload some more content on Patreon very soon. Uh, be sure to join our public Discord server if you haven't already. You can ask your questions there. You can maybe help others out. That community is, uh, is pretty awesome and it's growing every day. Thank you for that support as well. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.